When a car tears out, it leaves behind skid marks. But what does a UFO leave behind? We're going back more than 50 years for this first one, and what's been called some of the most credible UFO evidence of all time. November 2nd, 1971, it's evening in the small town of Delphos, Kansas. 16-year-old Ron Johnson is on his family farm when he suddenly sees a bright mushroom-shaped spacecraft hovering nearby. Johnson runs to his parents and they return just in time to see the craft disappearing in the sky. But back on the ground, they find this. Where the UFO allegedly hovered is an eight-foot wide ring with a whitish crust around the edge. And take a closer look, it looks like this ring is glowing. Harlan Inlow was one of the first law enforcement officers to arrive on the scene. It was a uh, eye-opening surprise. Here's this white, dry ring, looks like a, a big donut sitting in the middle of a mud field. Uh, we took statements, we photographed it, and we took actual soil samples. Ron's mother, Irma Johnson, tells Harlan she touched the white substance, and instantly her fingers became numb. Meanwhile, two other eyewitness reports of the UFO that night are soon confirmed, leading Harlan to only one conclusion. I am 100% convinced that an incident happened, and the way the family told us was credible. But it doesn't end there. Journalist MJ Benaya says when it comes to reported UFO landing sites, these strange sightings are not unique to Kansas. We have multiple cases that show UFOs sort of landing on the ground. One of the most famous cases was out of the 1980s in France, in Transon Provence, where a gentleman was farming in his field when he saw this large disc-like object take off into the sky. And again, it left impression marks as to where it was landed, as well as some burn marks on the ground. With a 21-page soil report, the Delphos, Kansas UFO is considered one of the most lab-studied UFO cases in history. So you'd think if it was possible to explain this ring, it would have been done by now. But no dice. Well, we got our experts here to give it another try. We begin with astronomer and video effects designer Mark D'Antonio. UFOs have been traditionally associated with heat, meaning this might have been ash. But there wasn't an excess of carbon ash that I could see in the chemical report. Some of the elements were hydrophobic in nature. It's that hydrophobicity that tells physicist Dr. Matthew Shadagas something's up. The term hydrophobic means water repellent. Most soil really needs water. That's how plants grow. This photo taken of the Delphos soil sample about 20 years after the incident shows a drop of water repelling off it. So there seems to be something amiss in the soil, but is it really glowing? D'Antonio thinks there's an explanation in the camera. It looks brighter on the film precisely because it's a brighter soil compared to the darker soil, and the camera tries to balance the light. But Shadaga says a camera artifact doesn't explain further research from the soil report. We have physical deposited evidence that the samples still have the same glowing property today, which is absolutely mind-blowing to me. The evidence is leaning alien, but geologist Dr. Bob Anderson thinks what we're looking at is natural, a mix of an unknown organism and water creating a froth of bacteria. I realize that this area is pretty conducive to this kind of thing, so I don't believe it has anything to do with the UFO. I think it's a natural phenomena of groundwater interaction in biology. It's a gas that's being released by that bacteria. But what about the numbness in the mother's hand? Dr. Anderson thinks he can explain that too. The mother got her hand burnt a little bit by touching that ring. That usually happens if you have an acid. It wouldn't surprise me that something got into the groundwater. My gut feeling is, is that there was something buried in that area that was man-made chemical, which would not show up on those 1970 as, uh, soil surveys. But still, why the ring shape? Dr. Shadagas points to another popular theory, that we're looking at a so-called fairy ring. They're typically formed by fungus feeding on decomposing matter in the soil. The fungus then grows from the center outwards to form a ring. Fairy rings are also known to have a hydrophobic effect on the soil. So this does appear to be a partial explanation that knocks out one or two features, but doesn't seem to fit the entire story. From a fairy ring to a possible UFO landing and even acidic soil, there were just so many conflicting theories here, plus all those credible witnesses. 
Our verdict is that this is simply an unexplained phenomenon. Before you get any ideas to investigate, you should know that the family eventually buried the ring to discourage curious trespassers. But if you ever come across one yourself, you know who to call. February 2020. It's a sunny afternoon in Garden Grove, California. Typically, when Brian Schuler's kids tell him they've seen a UFO, he credits it to overactive imaginations. But on this particular day, when his son beckons him into the backyard, Brian also sees something strange. And he records this. What is that? An object floats in the sky overhead, consisting of two connected, metallic-looking shapes with a dark underside. And for the first time, Brian can't explain it away to his kids. Looked like it had almost a glass front on it, and I couldn't tell what it was on the top. It, it moved towards my left side very slowly and then passed us, and uh, it just moved in a very straight line out of distance. Although the sighting leaves Brian perplexed, maybe he shouldn't be. Writer Amy Title explains Southern California's Orange County is historic when it comes to sightings of unidentified flying objects in broad daylight. Orange County has one of the oldest daytime UFO sightings. In 1965, road maintenance engineer Rex Heflin saw what he thought was a UFO, so he whipped out a camera and shot some quick Polaroids of the object. Heflin initially brushed off what he saw, assuming that it was some kind of test by a nearby military base. But years later, experts looked at the photographs and confirmed that it wasn't some government technology. Both of these objects appear to be flying low in the sky. They were both sighted near telephone poles and near power lines and they were seen roughly in the same area. So some might believe that there is a link between these two sightings. The Heflin case was one of the most talked about UFO incidents of the 1960s. And when high resolution prints of the original Polaroid pictures were reanalyzed 35 years later using the latest in digital technology, there were no indications of any tampering. Now, will the same be said of our backyard UFO? Let's see what the experts have to say. It was determined back in the 1960s that the object in Rex Heflin's photo wasn't military technology. But what about this one? If so, it's in the wrong direction. There's Los Alamitos. The joint base is completely behind him. It's in the exact 180 degrees behind that individual looking out to where the object is. So could this be a drone used for military purposes? I don't think that it's going to be a drone at all. It's not symmetrical object. And besides that, it's flying next to a power line. Yeah, that wouldn't be too cool. That's too close. OK, so no drone. But Hoffman does believe that the power line is a clue. When you zoom in on it, you can clearly see that it has body parts and everything in it possibly hanging like a thread. I think it's a spider that's hanging from that line. So we've got a spider. Mystery solved, but not quite. Astronomer and video effects designer Mark D'Antonio respectfully disagrees. I think based on the fact that if you look at the clarity of this wire and how this isn't really that clear, what that means is this object is substantially further away than the wire. And the giveaway is that when we look at the video, you see insects flying around the wire. It's like those black gnats are flying around. This thing is much further away than that, so this here would be much bigger than that if it was an insect, but there's no visible corollary for this being any kind of animal whatsoever. Not even a soaring bird like a vulture that might circle in the air. So what is it? Brian told us as he filmed, he didn't think it moved like a balloon. But D'Antonio says, not so fast. And it looks like it's just floating there, but the thing is just gently coming toward uh, the wire. And I believe where we have something that's floating lazily along in the sky, it looks to me like a mylar balloon. From the reflectivity down to the motion and the shape, the helium inside the balloon will eventually leak out. And you'll get these little creases and convolutions and changes in the brightness. And that could be what we're seeing here. D'Antonio believes it's likely the balloon spelled out a word and strayed from an outdoor party. This looks like it could be an H, but I see a lot of cases of these silver mylar balloons that get away. And I agree, it's odd looking. It's really odd looking.
Our verdict, we're going with partially deflated mylar balloon. We agree that the combination of light hitting the various crinkles in the balloon is what makes it look so oddly shaped in the sky. But is it an H or maybe a number? We'll leave that up to you to decide. June 24th, 2020. It's a tranquil summer evening in Cypress, Texas, just outside of Houston. A woman is relaxing in her backyard when suddenly something strange appears over the horizon. She quickly takes out her phone and captures this. Five glowing orange lights shimmer above the rooftops. But take a closer look. They also seem to fade away, then reappear seconds later. I've never seen anything like it. They're like going in weird shapes. They keep twinkling and going out. She records for almost a minute. Then the lights begin to gradually disappear until only one remains. It is so weird. Could this be an extraterrestrial sighting? According to journalist MJ Benias, it turns out Texas, and especially Houston, is no stranger to UFOs. Houston has about 80 UFO sightings a year where they're documented and recorded. In fact, adding to the intrigue behind this video, the witness claimed that there were many other smaller lights that her camera was unable to pick up. But as Houston is an important NASA hub, there could be another explanation, one that's homegrown and just as fascinating. In 2016, a reporter uncovered some archived footage where the military was hiring a contractor to develop some novel aircraft that potentially revolutionized aviation or jet technology. One was called the Dynafan, uh, and one was called the Aerokinetic Lift. We need to remember that in the 1960s, the Soviet Union uh, was engaged in a sort of arms race against the United States. So who could develop the best aviation technology has Houston returned to its Cold War roots as a flight technology hub? It could be possible that what we're seeing in this video is maybe some sort of new aircraft. What have we got here? A UFO? New NASA secret technology? Artemis is NASA's nearly $100 billion program to return to the moon, with the goal of landing humans as soon as 2024. Houston and the Johnson Space Flight Center are playing a key role to achieve that goal. Is it possible we've caught a glimpse of something to come? Let's see what our experts have to say. We begin with military aviation expert Tim McMillan. Is the answer the most obvious? Could these be airplanes or helicopters? In order to stay in flight, airplanes have to maintain a forward momentum. And we don't see the type of movement that I would expect from airplanes. A helicopter can hover in place, but typically if we're talking about helicopters, you would see a green or red warning lights that would determine on what side the helicopter, so you know if it's approaching or going away from you. We don't see that. If it's not a known aircraft, what about an unknown one? Could this be an experimental NASA project? McMillan isn't so sure. They definitely do test some platforms at Johnson in, in Texas, but at the same time, it's obviously operating within the Earth's atmosphere. That's a little out of the purview of what NASA does. Next, we go to astronomer and video effects designer Mark D'Antonio. When we look at these, the color is this orange color. That's kind of a dead giveaway. Orange is the color of a flame, and they're flickering, and flames flicker as well. In an earlier episode, we brought you another story from Texas of what we believe to be nighttime skydivers with flares. Could this be the same thing? A skydiver jumps out of a plane, and what happens is they light up their flare, but something happens with them. They're leaving a trail behind them, and we would have seen these things dropping down. In the time that she videotaped this, we would have seen the drop, and we do not. Instead, D'Antonio believes it's the fact that these lights are going up that solves the mystery. So my feeling in looking at these is that we're actually looking at what are called sky lanterns. They last 15 to 20 minutes max. They do tend to fade out, and as you can see, it, it goes from several lights in the sky to just one remaining. So I think that we're actually seeing several of them that were launched. So, our verdict, sky lanterns. But if you're determined to see aliens and interested in a good investment, head to Houston quickly. One survey found that Houston ranks fourth on the list of the best places in the United States to buy a home if you want to see UFOs. October 17th, 2021. 
United Flight 267 is making its way from Boston, Massachusetts to Denver, Colorado. At 8.50 a.m. local time, the plane is about to cross over Lake Michigan when a passenger noticed something amiss in the morning sky. The cell phone video shows hazy fields below and in the center of the frame, a white tic-tac-shaped object moving from left to right in a straight, steady path. Science writer Amy Title says it's the oblong shape that intrigues her the most. One of the things that really jumps out in this video is the shape of whatever this object is. That it has that kind of tic-tac shape is very reminiscent of other UAP or UFO sightings in recent years. In fact, it's that odd shape that was also witnessed in what is now considered one of the most famous and important UFO videos ever recorded. The first sighting came from pilot Chad Underwood, who was flying off the USS Nimitz on November 14th, 2004. What he saw was an object that he described as looking vaguely tic-tac shaped, and he coined the term tic-tac UFO. And ever since that first sighting, which has been released to the public from the Pentagon, there's been a slew of sightings of similarly tic-tac shaped UFOs. Title also points out that the location where this video was allegedly recorded is in an area notorious for bizarre and mysterious events. The Michigan Triangle is drawn between the cities of Ludington and Benton Harbor in Michigan and Manitowoc in Wisconsin. The earliest instance of a ship disappearing was actually in 1891, when a schooner went across the lake and disappeared overnight with seven sailors on board. And then there was a Northwest Airlines flight that disappeared over Lake Michigan in 1950. And ever since, there have been theories that some disturbance or something over Lake Michigan causes strange things to happen. So we've got the Michigan Triangle, the Bermuda Triangle, and there is another area known as the Alaska Triangle, which also lays claim to strange disappearances. What is it about these areas that wreak havoc on planes and ships? Some have theorized magnetic interference, and in the case of Bermuda, even methane gas emissions from the ocean floor. But did one passenger capture a glimpse into the mystery surrounding the Michigan Triangle? We'll let our experts make the call. First up, physicist Matthew Shadagas compares the object seen in the video to what was seen in the Nimitz footage released by the Pentagon in 2020. The coloration and shape, at least superficially, appear to be similar. But it does not appear to exhibit any strange velocity or acceleration that are associated with the Nimitz Tic Tac encounter and similar famous Navy UFO incidents. Shadagas also warns that due to the low resolution and the limitations of modern digital zoom cameras, the object may not be exactly as it appears. We cannot definitively say that the object is tic-tac or elliptically shaped, given that we don't know whether it's even in perfect focus, because it may not always be possible to have everything crystal clear with crisp edges in perfect focus. So if this isn't a Tic Tac UFO, and may not even be Tic Tac shaped, what is it? We don't see a whole lot of detail, but we can surmise based on its speed and the potential direction that his aircraft is going, that this was a passing by of another aircraft uh, below them. But if it's just another aircraft, why doesn't it have wings, propellers, or any of the other standard features associated with any known flying machine? My gut feeling is that because the resolution is not good and because the, the wing color kind of blends in with the surrounding terrain. There are some hints in the video. We can see a little notch below here, which might be part of a wing root of a commercial aircraft. So the back end could be where the tail of the plane is, and this notch could be where the wing is coming away. So if it's just an airplane, why does it look like a white Tic Tac? Many commercial aircraft are white, and the reason they use that titanium white is because it reflects a lot of the sunlight back, keeps the interior cool, climate controlled. So that is something we would expect to see. The wings are silver, and that silver or aluminum color is many times not visible on days where the sun is not out. And this is one of those days that is somewhat overcast. But we try not to rely on hunches around here. So based on D'Antonio's conclusions, we checked out the flight data, and there was indeed another plane, 
Delta 2474 passing United 267 in the opposite direction at the same time and place where this video was recorded. We may not be seeing all the details. I don't see anything out of the ordinary for a passing commercial aircraft. Our verdict? The evidence all points to the theory that this is a commercial airplane. It just looks like a tic-tac because of the camera lens, the sunlight, and the color of the plane.